If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I'm fascinated by 3D scanning. I've explored apps and services to achieve this using a smartphone in the past, mainly through photogrammetry. That gave okay results, but it's really just a poor man's 3D scanner. That's why I was absolutely delighted when RevoPoint reached out to ask if I would like to take a closer look at their game-changing 3D scanner, the RevoPoint Pop 3. As this is the first 3D scanner I've had the chance to play around with, I won't be comparing it to other products, and I'll just assess it based on its own merits. I'll start by just briefly discussing some of the main features of the POP3. Its main use case is for scanning what RevoPoint calls medium-sized objects, so that's anything from 20mm up to 2500mm. It's got a big RGB camera and two white LEDs which allow for great colour scanning, a fast scanning speed of up to 18 frames per second and some great connectivity options which include USB-C to your PC and smartphone as well as via Wi-Fi. To make sure you get a clean scan it also features a 9-axis inertial measurement unit which combines a gyroscope, accelerometer and a magnetometer to ensure it understands its location as you move the scanner which leads to more accurate scans without any of those shaky frames you can sometimes get. And the best part is that you don't need a supercomputer to run it. The POP3's internal chip handles most of the processing. With a minimum requirement of an Intel i5 and 8GB of RAM, it's accessible to most people. The included RevoScan software makes it a complete package. It's compatible with iOS, macOS, Android and Windows devices, allowing for scans and post-processing. You can even export your scan models to popular design software like AutoCAD or ZBrush and output them in STL format for 3D printing. So it's got everything from precise scanning to post-processing and it could be your way into the world of 3D modeling. So stay tuned as I take a closer look at the POP3 3D scanner. Let's take a look at what comes in the box then, starting with the calibration board. Then this handsome chap is the sample bust, which is included to give you something to test the scanner with. There's a warranty card and a quick start guide, a mini turntable, and then there's the scanner itself, nicely packaged in a protective plastic bag. This next bag contains some markers you can attach to objects to help the scanner out, as well as a black plastic sheet and some blue tack, so you can help to get rid of the background. This black disc thing helps the marker topper to stick to the turntable, and then these four pieces here fit together to create the marker topper. Then there's a USB-C to USB-A adapter, a holder for your phone, USB power cables for attaching to your PC as well as to a phone, and another power cable for the mini turntable, and then lastly there's the tripod for the scanner. Then RevoPoint also sent me an updated marker topper and calibration board. I'm pretty sure they'll be including these newer ones with the scanner itself going forward. So they really do make sure you have everything you need to get scanning. Putting the scanner together is dead easy. Just screw the top of the tripod on and then the scanner just clips in like this. Then clip the four pieces of the marker topper together and use this sticky disc thing to attach the marker topper to the turntable. I also put the updated marker topper on top of this. Before you can start scanning, you'll also need to install the RevoScan 5 software. And once it's all installed and updated, it's just a case of attaching the scanner to your PC using the included USB cable, and the software picks up the scanner straight away. Pretty easy stuff. For the first scan, I used the sample bust, put it on the turntable, adjusted the distance to the scanner using the handy guide in the software, and then I let it scan for a while. I adjusted the position of the bus to make sure that I got a complete scan of the whole object and to my surprise the software worked out that I'd changed the orientation of the bus pretty quickly and just continued scanning from the new angle. When it was done I clicked the complete button and then entered the one click editing mode. I just clicked on apply here to start the processing of the data and after a couple of minutes here's the final mesh. Other than the glitches where it captured my hands moving the model, it's pretty good. And to get rid of those little glitches, there's an isolation mode, which does a good job of detecting the bits you don't want and then removing them. Finally, I exported the model as an OBJ, so I could take a look at it using Maya. And as you can see, it's an almost perfect scan, other than a few easily fillable holes on the backside of the bottom just here. 
Not bad for my first 10 minutes with the scanner. Next, I tried an Apple to see how well the scanner also captures colours. I forgot to use the isolation feature on this one, but as you can see, once the material is applied, it's not a bad effort. Then I tried this mushroom garden ornament to see how well it did with that, and as you can see, it's generally a good scan, but it did have issues with the darker colour, so this one probably would have been better with some scanning spray on it. Overall though, pretty good. One thing I did want to test was whether or not Maya could automatically retopologize the mesh, as it can be very temperamental if there are any problems with the topology. It worked with no problems, which means that the Revoscan 5 software is putting out some pretty clean meshes as well. Now that I knew that I could retopologize pretty easily, I decided to use one of the scans for my game asset pipeline and put it into Unreal Engine 5. I started by cleaning up the Apple mesh and then making a duplicate and reducing the poly count to make it a little more reasonable as a game asset. I then transferred the texture from the scan over to the low poly apple and also used Substance 3D Painter to create a normal and ambient occlusion map. Once that was all done, I imported everything into a level I have in Unreal Engine, put the material on the apple and then placed it next to this computer so whoever sits here can have a little snack later. This whole process took me about an extra 10 minutes after I completed the scan. So overall I think this is great. You need to make sure you control the lighting when you're scanning and it doesn't do well with dark or reflective surfaces but that's also true of other scanners and also photogrammetry. I'll definitely keep using this and I'm excited to look at other 3D scanners in the future. If you want to check out the Revo Point Pop 3 3D scanner for yourself then check out the link in the video description and Revo Point have also given me a coupon you can use to get $50 off the scanner. Just use Game DA50. That's Game DA50. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.